Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about a very controversial topic, which is the Hoya tendril. I released a Hoya video last night and a lot of you guys were screaming because I actually cut a few of these tendrils off the Hoyas. And there are a few school, th school of thoughts for that. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the leaves and peduncles do come out later on these uh, long peduncles which means that they're actually sending out runners to try to grab a hold of something and once established, the, the leaves and the peduncles will follow. By the way, I have a swollen right side of the jaw because I have my tooth implanted in and I'm probably talking funny right now, so uh, yeah. And uh, over here, I can see there's actually baby leaves forming here and what happens is that they're actually very easy to knock off. So if you, if you accidentally bump them off, they will not grow back on, on this node again, which means that you will end up with a node that has uh, a long runner with no leaves for a long time. However, if you are patient, uh, it will just keep getting longer and longer. You can give it a trellis to climb on, uh, or you can just let it clamber over each other and other plants. Uh, or you can set it free into the, on, onto a tree, which I did. Uh, so, however, in my video, it's a controversial topic because I actually cut it off. It was a decision on my part because I've knocked off a, quite a few leaves on the tendril. So I figured, you know what, I'm not going to have a long crazy runner uh, that is unmanageable and that is not going to have leaves for a while. So I, I just ended up cutting them off. In most cases, however, I would advise for you not to cut off your tendrils. And another thing is that my Hoya rack, I see it over there, it's super, super full. So what, what happens if you cut off a tendril is that uh, the Hoya would actually push out new uh, vines from one of the nodes below. We don't know which node yet. Usually it's the one right below where you cut it. And uh, the new vine will have slightly closer internodes than the long runner. Uh, this means that it will create a bushier plant. So uh, in, my, in my personal um, Hoya care, I prefer to have a pot a tiny pot of Hoya that is very bushy rather than having uh, one uh, plant that has a continuously long vine. Uh, however, the, the long vine method, I mean, or when you don't cut off the long runner, uh, I have a feeling that it also uh, creates more flowers. So when you have uh, a, a long vine that is away from the pot, the, the chances of, of having peduncles in flowering is actually higher. So that is just in my, uh, what I noticed. So yeah, there's pros and cons to cutting off vines and I did in my video and I'm sorry I did not clarify and I want to make this video to let you guys know um, the pros and cons of the, of the tendrils. If you don't have a lot of plants uh, and you just wanted to enjoy, you want to see them go wild and you want to see them behave as they would naturally, definitely do keep them fine and it will also flower better for you, I think. So let me quickly walk through with you the basics of a Hoya growth pattern uh, and that this is a Hoya carnosa. And what happens is that it will get a very bushy uh, bottom because this was actually rooted from a leaf. So all Hoyas behave pretty much the same way. And once it's established, uh, the base, it will start throwing out runners and it's going to try to multiply itself and grab onto things. So um, yeah, most Hoyas do this. So what happens is that if you cut the ten tendrils off, the long tendrils, it will continue to push out from uh, below. So that is one of my theories at least. So let me quickly show you how um, those uh, runners work in nature. So this is a Hoya macrophylla and it's actually trying to root itself to the wall. So it's going to establish itself there. So as you can see, it's already starting to attach. Uh, let me see what other runners do we have. Uh, this is the one where I cut off one of the runners. This is another runner that it has um, and it's still got the baby leaves, which is good. Uh, I made a cut here with uh, in the previous video with, with that crazy ass runner and yeah, I'd, you can build a trellis like this but again, this um, space would quickly get out of control uh, and uh, when you have a lot of uh, Hoyas with, with trellises like this, keep in mind that you need to space them a little bit farther apart so they can get better light. Um, yeah, and then you, when you have uh, other Hoyas, they like the Lacunosas, their vines are a lot shorter their tendrils I mean and this one's got a pretty long uh, tendril as well and sometimes the tendrils do get dried uh, on the tip and that's when you definitely should cut it off because nothing's gonna grow from here so in this case yeah this, this can be cut off right here and I wanted to quickly show you let me see again. this is a Hoya uh, microphylla and again this is a long tendril that's happening 
uh, and I'm, I may not want this because I want this to be a pot full of microphylla instead of this one long vine uh, from here. So what, what you can do is that you can probably actually wait for the vine to uh, sprout leaves and then just cut it off after the leaves have formed because that will be your uh, viable cuttings. So yeah, I can actually cut this into multiple plants right now. And when you cut it, you can actually leave the tendril on if you want because that will also give you a chance of peduncles. Um, last thing, <laughs> let me show you um, this pubicalic splash which I moved here. This is the one that's flowered and one of my theories is that when you give it a runner, this is a very long run, it, sorry that's the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, it's trying to grab onto everything. Uh, the long runner is here actually. See how long it is, it doesn't have any leaves or maybe I knocked off the leaves, I'm not sure. I moved it around so many times and it's given me a flower here after like uh, I would say a meter long of tendrils and it gave me another flower later on over here so um, yeah uh, this leads me to believe that when you give Hoya's tendrils they do tend to flower uh, better so yeah I hope this answers some of your questions about Hoya's and tendrils and why you shouldn't cut it off and in what situation do you want to cut it off it's uh, your choice <laughs> thanks for watching bye